Over the past two decades, internet use has exploded in Africa's largest economy. At the beginning of 2001, a paltry 200,000 Nigerians used the internet. By 2020, that figure had increased to over 126 million, a factor of almost 630 with a 61.2% penetration of the population. In 2018, 98% of the adult population used some type of mobile phone, which are 56% smartphones to access the internet, while computers and tablets were used by only 23% and 9% respectively. This growth has been economically significant as well. In the second quarter of 2019, the information and communication sectors 13.8% contribution to nominal GDP surpassed that of oil and gas at 8.8%. Increased access to the internet and social networking platforms has also stimulated social political conversations and influenced civic action. The hashtags Occupy Nigeria, Bring Back Our Girls, Not Too Young to Run, Citizen Solution to End Terrorism, and answers signify some of the most notable citizen-driven advocacy campaigns of recent years in Nigeria. Yet, the freedom of digital advocacy and privacy in Nigeria are on shaky terrain and have been for a while. The Paradigm Initiative is one of Nigeria's leading advocates for the promotion of digital rights. Their latest report raises a number of red flags concerning people's vulnerability to data-related abuse by state and private sector actors and outlines how the current legal and regulatory framework helps to undermine the freedom of expression. When people know they are being watched, they will not talk. Therefore, when people's privacy is taken away from them, the first thing it does for them is that it shuts their mouth because they know somebody is watching them. And it's not just somebody, somebody who has the power to put them in jail. Someone who has the power to, to use state power to suppress them. So they have been very careful to express even their views, their opinion on public issues. Chapter 4, Section 37 of the Nigerian Constitution clearly states that the privacy of citizens, their homes, correspondence, telephone conversations, and telegraphic communications is hereby guaranteed and protected. However, in the same chapter, there is a clause in section 45 that limits the rights to privacy. It states that nothing in section 37 shall invalidate any law that is reasonably justifiable in a democratic society. A. In the interest of defense, public safety, public order, public morality or public health, or B, for the purpose of protecting the rights and freedoms of other persons. The argument should be made that these regulations are necessary because uh, they are geared towards protection of national security, national interest, and more of the familiar, similar words. But the argument from our perspective or from my perspective is that uh, these terms are hardly defined and uh, are left to different kinds of interpretation so we can do. So national security can be anything. For example, national security can be stopping the protest that is currently ongoing. At the heart of the existing policy framework is the Nigerian Communications Act of 2003. On the section 147 of the art, it states that the National Communications Commission, NCC, may determine that licensed operators implement the capability to allow authorized interception of communications. Furthermore, Section 148 allows the Commission, in the event of a public emergency or in the interest of public safety, suspend licenses, temporary control of services or networks, or take possession of network facilities, service, or customer equipment. Most policies that touch on digital rights and privacy have been drafted over the years in reaction to national security threats or other issues with grave economic implications. Cybercrime is a good example. 
In 2012, Nigerian consumers lost more than 13 billion US dollars to cybercrime. It was also a huge threat to foreign investment and the country's international image. Given these mounting pressures, the government eventually felt compelled to act, which resulted in the Cyber Crimes Act. However, the manner in which the Cyber Crime Act is implemented by some government authorities further affirms the concerns expressed by civil activists in the country. For years, organizations like the Paradigm Initiative Nigeria have been drawing public attention to an aspect of the act that is prone to abuse and has been used in the past to squash freedom of expression. Section 24 of the Act states that any person who knowingly or intentionally sends a message or other matters by means of a computer system or network that is grossly offensive, pornographic, or of an indecent, obscene, or menacing character, or causes any such message or matter to be so sent, has committed an offense under the Act and shall be liable for punishment. The Act, under the same section, further criminalizes sending messages and other matter for the purpose of causing annoyance, inconvenience, danger, obstruction, insult, injury, criminal intimidation, enmity, hatred, ill will, or needless anxiety to another. Even the, the implementation of, of that section of the Act in Nigeria has been such that it is used to punish those who maybe write something that people don't like even once. So stalking is a repeated thing. But when someone writes something once and you say you're charging them for cyber stalking, then you're making a joke of the letter and even the spirit of, of that section of the Act. So what, what this... Uh, you know, laws do in Nigeria that are not rights respecting is that they limit the opportunity for citizens who may have dissenting opinion uh, to contribute to democratic debate. Against this backdrop, there have been numerous advocacy efforts by civil society organizations to put in place legislation that will strengthen the freedom of expression on the internet and privacy. According to the Declaration of Principles on Freedom of Expression and Access to Information in Africa 2019, countries should ensure that safeguards are provided for the right to privacy for any law that authorizes targeted communication surveillance. Everybody agrees on that declaration. It is the basic minimum of our collective responsibility around the issues that have been descri you know, described in terms of, you know, in terms of rights, in terms of access to information and things like that. We're not supposed to make sure that all of the bills and laws that we, or bills that are going to become laws in Nigeria are, you know, um, basically rhyme and sync with this uh, you know, with this declaration that we have, we are part of, and to these things that we have agreed to, uh, unfortunately, that is not exactly the case uh, for many of the bills that eventually, you know, become laws in Nigeria. In April 2015, Paradigm Initiative Nigeria led a coalition that worked on a bill meant to address the broad issue of digital rights. Despite being passed by both houses of the National Assembly, the president declined to sign it into law, citing technical issues in the bill's draft bordering around a possible duplication that could lead to a potential legislative conflict in the future. Currently, the bill has so far been redrafted and has now passed first reading in the National House of Representatives. We're now talking to every sector. Civil society is at, you know, has had conversations. In fact, the first thing we did was to have a round table uh, with the people that disagreed with components of the bill, which of course led to the president was signing. The feedback they've given, we have then translated into text and then introduced into the new bill, such that it does not compromise the spirit of the rights and freedoms that the bill seeks, but that it clarifies language. And it also uh, avoids duplicity. So now that things around the data privacy and protection are already taken care of in another bill, that is no longer a subject 
of the Digital Rights and Freedom Bill. Nigeria is a democracy and one of its core tenants should be the respect of an individual's rights to privacy and freedom of expression. But as long as there are laws that keep undermining these rights, the strength of Nigeria's democracy will continue to be questioned. We must, as citizens, as organizations, as private sector, realize that the laws we allow today could come to bite us in wrong places tomorrow. And guess what? The same also applies to government officials. You will leave in 2023. You will leave eventually, whenever your term is over. When you leave, God help you that you're not in opposition. Because if you are, the same things that you have created today will come back to bite you. The atmosphere we create today is the same atmosphere we'll all live in tomorrow. Especially when, not even if, uh, those who hold power lose it. Because it's only a matter of time.